Hello, Laura. Hello, Gaia. Thank you for this time with you. Could you uh, tell us who you are? I mean, what's your name? Where do you live? A bit about yourself. Thank you very much, Gaia, for inviting me to speak with you. My name is Laura Shannon. I'm an American and British citizen. I was born in the US of mixed European and Native American ancestry. And I've been living in Europe for 30 years, first in France, then in London, then in Fintorn in Scotland, and now also in Greece, as well as in Canterbury in England. Yeah. And my partner is Greek, so I'm a bit of a mixed, uh, mixed salad. And we meet here in Morocco after having done a retreat in the desert. So yes, here we are in Marrakesh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I mean, that I know that you are a dancer. Or can you tell us a bit more what, what you do? Well, I study and research the women's traditional circle dances of Eastern Europe, and I also teach them. And I go all over the world for this work. And the reason I find them so fascinating that I've devoted my entire life to them is firstly I think they have a healing power and a therapeutic power which we women can really benefit from to help improve our own lives but in the company of a, a circle which is loving and supportive but also I think these dances are an ancient mystery school which has served to transmit women's wisdom consciously through generations for thousands of years. And what does it do if one does these dances? Well, what are the effects? There are many positive effects. Physically, you hold hands with people who maybe you don't even know, and you share movements and steps together, and that synchronizes the brain waves and brings you into a more positive way of being, especially for women who feel depressed or isolated. This is a way to just shift up a gear into a feeling of being more connected with their own inner source of joy vitality and, and zest for life. Emotionally, this feeling of comfort and supportive connection with other women can be incredibly powerful, again, to heal the sense of isolation that so many women in the West seem to have because of our way of life. Mentally, as I said, I see these dances as a source of wisdom and information to help us live better lives. And spiritually, they connect us also with very deep qualities uh, which I guess you have to experience in order to access mm -hmm. but the main thing about the spirituality of the women's dances is that there is no dogma there's no one right way mm. and other similarities I mean you say you teaching dances and no dances from Greece to Morocco are there similarities or differences in these yes, dances? There are many similarities, which is one of the ways that we can know that the dances are thousands of years old, is that you find the same structures all over the world. Wherever women have a dance practice, you see similarities, that you hold hands in a circle, that you do the same steps together. Normally, women sing together also, and this is like a cross-cultural phenomenon that you find in every ethnic group and every religious group also. So it's older than the monotheistic religions. That means for women it's pre-patriarchal and that's very interesting for us. And it's mostly women who do these dances, not so much men? Actually the men do them too, but my research is pretty much only on the women's dances. Because when I started out learning international folk dances, it was mainly men who were teaching and they mostly taught men's steps, men's style. A lot of running, jumping, leaping, which is beautiful to watch, but not easy for women to do. And at any age, we might have our periods, we might be pregnant, we might have been recently pregnant, but as we age especially, we might have sore knees, a sore back, a sore hip, and the women's dances are for women of every age mm -hmm. to feel empowered by, vitalized by, not stressed or exhausted by. And that's the main thing about the women's dances that makes them a source of healing and health, right up until the day we die. <laughs> Yeah. So what's your next plan? Well, my next plan is actually to continue with my PhD studies at Canterbury Christ Church University. I want to help the world understand what a treasure we have in these women's dances and the philosophy which I believe is consciously encoded within them. And as I do that, I will also continue my research, particularly in Greece and Bulgaria, and I'll continue my teaching. I go all over the world and it's my great pleasure and privilege to be able to connect with women's circles and you know women are the same whatever our race religion language life experience our age the dances have something to give to everyone and it's also a place where we can give what we have to give and that's sometimes not possible in our modern world 
I meet many women who have no forum, no people who want to receive what she has to give, and that's even worse than not receiving what you need, mm -hmm. not being able to give what is in you to give. But in the dances, we can give and receive, and I think that's one of the things that makes it so yeah. beautiful. Talking about being a woman, um, do you have children? I don't have children. I have a stepdaughter who's 22, mm -hmm. and it's been my pleasure to have been in her life for the last 12 years. And was this a conscious decision, or it no. just happened? It wasn't a conscious decision. I did try to have children. I had several miscarriages, and then I, I accepted that this was God's plan, or the plan of my own yeah. destiny or my yeah. soul contract. And the truth is that if I had had children, although I wanted them, I wouldn't be doing the work I had done yeah. in this time. Yeah. And, and they, you know, since there's no one else researching these women's dances in this way and teaching them as a, a uh, not just as an anthropological exercise, but really as a system of therapeutic and, and transformative learning for women of today, you know, I, I sort of feel like, well, maybe these dance circles are something I can bring creatively. Your children, maybe. things are giving birth. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, two or three more questions, and one of them is, what at this present moment of your life is challenging? What do you find uh, difficult to deal with? Hmm, well... Uh, personally, I find it challenging because I had an accident two and a half years ago that limited me s quite seriously in my physical movements. But to my surprise, the dances have been a source of healing. Although there are some movements I still can't do, the movements I can do help me to recover. Mm. So I'm still able to dance these women's dances. I can't do anything else. So that's all right. That's not such a challenge. I think I'm through the worst of it now. But I find the world situation very challenging and that also gives an impetus to try to do this work with women's groups um, as much as possible to help women connect to their own source of inner strength. And one thing about the women's traditional dances is that every woman in Greece or Bulgaria in the traditional culture had to develop the capacity to lead, to be a leader of the dances and therefore a leader in life situations. And I think we need women's leadership now if we're going to solve the problems of the planet and ensure a future for future generations. Yeah. Um, and what do you find rewarding in this moment of your life? Everything is rewarding. Mm -hmm. To wake up, to open my eyes, to see the day, whether it's raining or the sun is shining, it's an opportunity to be on this beautiful planet, who knows for how long, and also to also to try to make the most of our gifts. And I think for me, there's always this question every day, how can I best fulfill my soul contract, mm. my life purpose, my reason for being here? And how can I help other women fulfill their own purpose for mm. being here? For me, it's rewarding if it has meaning. Mm. So you were saying a lot of touching on the important things about women's issue. My last question, and in some way you kind of said something, tipped on it, but it would be what's your tip for women? What's your advice? or you, What would you tell the women who watch this interview? Well, that's a beautiful question. And I would say you have it all within you, everything you need. You have access to a source of universal healing and wisdom that doesn't depend on anyone else else and it's completely free from all religious belief it means you can have any religion or none and still access this deep source of self-love and self-trust that isn't just about yourself it's about you giving your gifts to the world because the world needs you now so if i can be a little bit um give you some hard advice get over your personal problems and do the work you're meant to do in the world. Mm -hmm. Enough with the therapy, enough with the navel gazing. Our planet needs us. We go with our problems. None of us is perfect. I walk with a stick, but I walk. So walk as you are, let yourself be as you are, and give the, give the gifts that you have to give to the world. That's my advice. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. Thank you, Gaia dear. Thank you, and bless you.